The Technopova 5 Pro is a software and design update that are both welcome for a slightly higher price tag this time around. Last year's Pova 4 Pro started at 9,699 pesos for the base model with 120GB storage and 8GB of RAM. This year, Pova 5 Pro has only one model. It also has 8GB of RAM but with 256GB storage that you can still expand using the hybrid microSD SIM slot. That model cost 10,999 pesos, a less than 800 pesos increase from last year's top model with the same RAM and combo storage. Along with those things are new design, new display, new software features, and faster charging. Why don't we start by addressing the elephant in the room, which is the design. Techno picks up where it left off with the design by offering a gamer-centric look from the backside of things. The POVA 5 Pro comes in two colors, one is the Dark Edition Black and the other, which is the one we have here, is the Silver Fantasy. Okay, so in the renders you can really see the silver color of the device, but in person, this looks a lot like shiny blue to my eyes, regardless of how the light hits the back panel. In severe off angles, it can look really silver, but 80% of the time, it's metallic blue. In case you haven't noticed yet, yes. The new design of POVA 5 Pro is heavily inspired by nutting phones. But unlike the more expensive ones, the back panel here is just a sticker slap on the back of the device to make it seem like you're looking at what's inside. And despite the similarities of a wireless charging coil on the back, this phone does not support any kind of wireless charging. What it does support, however, is backlit notification effects. So there are two sections that light up depending on what you have the LED set it for. In the settings, there is a feature called backlight effect. You can have the feature on when there's an incoming notification, when playing music, when charging the phone, and when playing PUBG from GameSpace, Techno's game launcher. Although the LED is in full RGB, it does support five colors, but Techno doesn't indicate it explicitly. Instead, the color of the lights depends on the kind of effects, such as soft, raising, dreamy, party, and brief. You can also set a specific time for the lights to automatically shut down and turn on, but based on my use, the software has been buggy. Auto shutdown works, but the feature doesn't turn on automatically. Additionally, the intensity of the light is non-adjustable and hardly noticeable in well-lit conditions. Most of the features here are adjustable with software, like the limited number of colors and the way the lights don't stay on when you have a missed notification. Hopefully, this gets fixed or added in future updates, but for now, that's how the backlight effect works here. So the POVA 5 Pro is still an all-plastic phone with no official IP rating, but you still have decent dual speakers and a headphone jack with a built-in FM radio app. You do have to watch out for the vibrating back panel when the volume is high as it can get irritating to some extent. The side fingerprint scanner though is still solid and still better than in-display fingerprint scanners. And despite the build being on the thick side, it's actually light to carry at 212 grams. As a gaming phone, the POVA 5 Pro is on the tall side. The display gets a small but significant bump in display size from 6.66 inches to 6.78 inches. Since this is a Nara phone, it's not as challenging as other large screen phones to operate and hold this phone with one hand. On the other end, you still get those thick bezels around the screen, especially the chin which, if I'm being honest, is totally not distracting at all during my time with this phone. The refresh rate is also faster now from 90Hz to 120Hz, but some of you may be disappointed to see IPS LCD instead of AMOLED. Both have their own pros and cons, but the thing about LCD is that gamers won't have to worry about burn-in or permanent shadowing on the screen due to long hours of use. The downside to that is that the colors, contrast, and brightness level of the POVA 5 Pro are not as good as most AMOLED. At best, the display maxes out at 500 nits, which is great for indoor use but readable at best outdoors. This is an average IPS LCD, so there were times when I noticed colors looking bland and cool in tone. This isn't also the sharpest panel despite the 1080p resolution, and the software over sharpening applied to video playback doesn't help in any way in making the viewing experience better. 
the auto brightness could also be better it's too sensitive and sets the brightness too low indoors at this price point you can get better panels from other phones but this is a gaming centric device so this phone should be better in gaming right well that's a yes and no for me yes because techno added useful features for gamers to use like bypass charging and faster charging no, because the raw performance from the chipset is no different from last year, meaning you don't get a real upgrade in terms of faster or smoother gameplay. So, Topova 5 Pro is now sporting a Dimensity 6080 chipset, and it's a good budget mid-range chipset in 2023. But underneath the rebranding of MediaTek's chipset is an old CPU and GPU pairing. The ARM Mali G57 MC2 GPU is the same GPU found on the POVA 4 Pro. Even the CPUs with Cortex A76 and A55 are the same, with only the two performance cores having 0.2 GB faster clock speed. Performance wise, you're not getting significant upgrades in speed or visuals in games since the Dimensity 6080 sports the same CPU and GPU as the Helio G99 of the POVA 4 Pro. As far as my testing goes, my gaming experience can be summarized in one sentence. The POVA 5 Pro plays well in older titles like Mobile Legends, Call of Duty, and PUBG, but struggles to maintain decent frame rates even in low settings with newer titles like Honkai Star Rail and Monster Hunter Now. On the flip side, I do like Techno's game space. It has useful features and offers enough customization that tries to please every gamer's needs. There's off-screen gaming which works great for me when I need to download huge resources while keeping the screen from draining the battery, the bypass charging to delay the battery degradation, and mapping the volume rocker for two more in-game functions. As far as heat is concerned, the device doesn't heat up as much as other older phones and remains warm at best during intense loads like gaming or surfing while in mobile data. When it comes to software, iOS 13 that's based on Android 13 is now cleaner and closer to stock Android. Just the organization of features in the settings is much easier to understand. But with every major software update comes extra resources and power needed to support new features. Since the POVA 5 Pro performs similarly to Helio G99, we're starting to see the limitations of the chipset. The Dimensity 6080 is good enough for single tasks. I have no problems when it comes to doom scrolling on various social apps. I can see the smoothness of that 120Hz display. What's challenging for this phone is when doing multiple tasks at the same time. When I have a video playing in picture picture mode, the phone starts to show micro jitters and lags at times. This is easily noticeable when you're scrolling then suddenly a video autoplays in the foreground. Phones nowadays require more power to keep them smooth and stable. Not because of the way we use our phones, like we still use the same apps for years, but because these apps have become a distraction, it tries to show you a lot of things at the same time. Video is one of the heaviest factors of them all. Then you have ads that suddenly pop up out of nowhere. All these require some processing power. Individually, they may be eating up a small portion of your resources, but when they do pile up, they become significant. Finally, we have the cameras. Nothing really changed hardware wise, except for the 16 megapixel selfie camera that was 8 megapixel last year. For a non camera centric phone, this isn't bad. I was expecting bad quality from a budget mid range gaming phone, but this is acceptable even for me. I do suggest using the 50 megapixel mode of the main camera since this rids off the sharpening effect and really comes clutch when using 2x zoom. There is no ultra wide sensor here. Instead, you have a less than 1 megapixel camera for depth purposes, which doesn't do a good job when it comes to accurately separating the subject from the background. Now, the portrait cutout is just bad, but not the worst I've seen. Techno software likes cool tone in its images, but the colors are closer to natural than saturated, and I kinda like it. Another feature that I like, which I only see in Techno's camera app, is the tap to focus and capture. Usually it's only tap to focus, then you capture with a button. I didn't realize until now that tap to focus and capture is really intuitive and fast. The selfie camera is usable at best, 
but despite the higher resolution of the camera, these selfies are too sharpened for my liking. This kind of quality is best for video calling. On the video end, both the selfie and main camera can record up to 1440p or 2K resolution, which I really like in more affordable phones since 1080p is slowly becoming outdated with devices getting bigger and bigger screens like tablets and TVs. You do lose stabilization with a higher resolution, so best to use an accessory to keep the video steady for a much better quality. Techno isn't as aggressive as other brands when it comes to software processing, but I think it needs to do better in color reproduction, especially HDR as the output can look quite old or vintage or something out of a camera from the early 2000s. The battery capacity is significantly smaller at 5000mAh. Last year's model was 6000mAh, but the charging rate now is at 68 watts. And with a smaller capacity, you can go from 0 to 70% in just 30 minutes, while a full charge requires 15 minutes, which is still under an hour, making this phone the fastest in its price category. But the battery life, despite a smaller capacity, is still very good. I usually average 6 to 7 hours screen time, including gaming for less than an hour in story. It may be a tall task for Techno to follow up a home run after a home run with its POVA 5 Pro. I am left a bit disappointed with the similar performance of the Dimensity 6080 to last year's Helio G99, except this time you have 5G to take advantage of, but for a small price increase. I guess it's tough to complain when you have the fastest charging on the phone already in this price range and one of the coolest designs that even has customizable LED panels, another first at this price range. And cameras that don't suck for a gaming phone, well except for the selfie camera. That's the POVA 5 Pro 30 days later. Drop a sub or a like if you feel like supporting the channel, and as always, until the next one, stay safe.